February 7th. It's hot stove Thursday this time for baseball. And today we had a huge trade that went on involving JT Bermuda. We'll get into that. And now, JT Sports Talk. I'm Bobby Thompson. I'm Julian Gillardi. And yeah, I don't know if this is actually, gonna, it's not going to actually drop on Thursday, but it's being recorded on Thursday. It felt very strange when you say hot stove Thursday. I was getting so used to hot stove Tuesday, you know? Yeah, I had to throw something in Yeah, there, no, no, I know, I know. But we'll be back toward Tuesday to hopefully once stuff gets normal. Yeah. Although, got some stuff to talk about for sure. This will be one of our shorter baseball videos probably. It's very yes. brief. There's not that much information still. It's just this one big story we had to talk about. It finally happened. Thank you, Derek Jeter, for yes. finally trading JT Real Muto so we could stop talking about him. Because that was a saga. Oh, there's man. one one domino falls. One thing to get out of the way. Now there's just two big names that seem to still be out there. And we don't even need to say their names. At this point, it's like the men you don't speak about. Because you just like know who they are. It's like are. saying Lord Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, that was good. that's what I was looking for. It's basically like, they're basically Lord Baltimore right now, both of them. Yeah. You don't even want to speak in their names. Because you're just like so tired of it. Like, the repetitive nonsense. I'm so sick of the non... I'm it's so all sick the of articles, it. all the guesses. No one knows a thing still. Although I got one good piece of information. A couple things. That maybe Bryce Harper and the Yankees. Although we'll get to that later. JT Real Muto. Yeah. Okay. This finally happened. This was well overdue. It took about three months. Maybe even longer, honestly. Yeah. But after talking to probably about ten teams, I'm going to guess... Like, we went through this last week. Phillies, which is where he is now. Dodgers, Padres, Astros, Braves, Mets, Rays, Reds. Yankee Did I say Padres yet? Yeah. Okay, so eight teams at least, maybe more. It was ridiculous what went down. I'm pretty sure he would he legitimately talk to all of them too. But that, he had to do his due diligence. His due diligence, that, that's putting it mildly, he, he took months. Did I say Mets? Did I even yes, say Mets? Yes, okay, did. okay. It's just hard it to was, keep track of all these teams. Uh, it is. And you know what? He got <laughs> traded today to the Phillies, and they got what they wanted. They saw a prospect they like, and they got it. They got a nice haul for the guy. We all yeah. know he was not going to be a Marlin. No. And <clears throat> Derek Jeter did to, to Remuto what he did to John Carlos Stanton last year. Yeah. So it's a lot longer, obviously. Yeah. So listen, I'm gonna tell you this. I think I think the uh, Phillies. This is just the first move. Domino. Yes. Well, there's been the several moves, but this is a big one, obviously. JT. I've broken him down a million times, but you get one more breakdown. The last one of JT. Four point three wins above replacement. Twenty one homers. Seventy four RBIs. Two seventy seven average. Threw out thirty eight percent of his runners, and I believe only had eight pass balls. So mm. he's a full package defense and offense. That team's way better with him. So let's break down what the Phillies gave up and what the Marlins received sure. because we've hit JT over the head a million times already. Enough of yeah. JT. It's over. Thank God. It's, so now we don't have to talk about it no more. Yes. So they trade the catcher. Alfario was actually a starting catcher for the Phillies for a while. He will be the Marlins' new starter. Alfario had 10 homers, 37 ribbies, a 262 average, 1.2 wins above replacement, and 344 at-bats. He's 25 years old. He still has some room to grow. Behind the plate, he's not outstanding by any means. 10 pass balls and only 26% of runners thrown out. So it's a huge drop-off, obviously, from JT, but... That's what has to happen. They need a starting catcher, so that's what it'll be for the Marlins. But they also got a starter in this, Will Stewart. A 206 ERA, 90 strikeouts, and 21 walks in low A ball, mind you. But 113 innings pitch, he's shown some promise. He was drafted in 2015, so maybe he'll become a decent pitcher for the Marlins. But the main haul in this package, the name that everyone needs to remember that needs to pay off for Derek Cheater and the Marlins is Cito Sanchez. This guy is compared to Mr. Pedro Martinez. Wow. Yes, they think he could be that good. He throws around 100 miles an hour. He's got gas. He's around 20, 21 years old only. He had an elbow problem last year. He's also only an A-ball, but here's the numbers he put up in that time span. And this is not over just a year. I believe this is two years, but here they are. 248 ERA is whip 0.99, very good. 
191 Ks to just 43 walks in 221 innings. That's so, that's tremendous. Yeah, he's put in some good work. He's he if he can continue this progression through the Double A, Triple A, you could probably see him in the majors. Not this year, maybe next year, I'll guess. Yeah. And here's the thing with the Marlins and the whole Derek Jeter tear down. It's very hard to grade these trades because you don't know what these guys are going to become. Last year, Yelish, Stanton, Ozuna, D. Gordon, all of them sent packing. And you don't know what you're getting back yet, really. No. Although Sterling Castro is a decent player. You know him, obviously. But other yeah. than that, the rest of it's very murky. You need to see how this plan comes together for the Marlins. This is a rebuild. This is a, That's what this is. It's a five-year plan. They're hoping to be competitive in two to three years. And that's the best-case scenario for them after this season, two to three years. Not even counting this season. Yeah. That's how far away this team is. They're the doormat of the NL East. All the other teams got better. They got worse again. I mean... It's crazy how far off they are from the other four teams in the East. They got a long way to go. But I guess I'm going to ask you, sure. should we trust this process? Do you believe in this process? Do you think in two to three years the Marlins will come out the other side and can they play some competitive baseball again? What do you think? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you this. All the trades they've done, they've gotten a great haul on this. And I think the best haul they got is the one they just they just got today. From the Phillies. It could be, yeah. And you know what? Maybe, Especially if that guy turns out to be maybe, anything close to Pedro. Maybe they could be... <laughs> well, that's... He's got... He's got he's yeah, that's a big... A big that's a Phillies. big, big, big ass. Um, but but <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. They... They might. You know, they don't have any star power, but they got no. youth. They got youth, and maybe, you know, maybe they could all turn out to be something great. But right now, to me, I feel like... <clears throat> Derek Jeter's got his work cut out for him. He got oh, rid yeah. of all the play, the great players they had and took on young players for a reason. He's trying to build something up to be great for a while. Yeah. But it's going to take a long time, Derek, and he knows that too. I think it's in, in two to three years. Never mind. I'm going to say five or six years. They'll be good. Um, oh, whoa. So you, really, you think five to six from now? Yes. Oh, you think it's going to be that long? Yeah. Oh, gee, that's painful. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miami Marlins. Huh? That's a like, tough sell for a so, while. So if that happens. I hope for their sake it's closer to two to three. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> you know we'll see what happens. But in my opinion, that's um that's my real personal opinion about it. I think that they got a long way to go. You trade away not only you trade away the a reigning defending a NL MVP and John Carlos Stanton, you get rid of Christian Yelich. Not an MVP. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not him, just Stan. I mean, no, 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 Yelich won the yeah. MVP. Oh, that's right. <laughs> You're right. See, see, two. So, two so MVPs. they essentially traded away two MVPs. Crazy. Ozuna, D Gordon, D Gordon, now, the fastest guy, and now league. the best catcher in baseball, arguably. So, so yeah, you it's know, a tear down. It is what it is. So now the I think the Phillies got a great haul for uh, the Phillies got a great player. This is something they wanted. You know, they're still waiting on the Harper and Machado situation. I am not yeah. going. To feed into that. Yeah, we can't anymore. So, with that, you know, they didn't spend stupid money on this. What they did was they spent stupid money. This is really smart money, actually. They, they actually, <laughs> this wasn't stupid money spending. This was being smart with your prospects. And yeah. you know what? You, you know, the prospects you gave up, you know, I, I think it, it will benefit you in the end, trust me. Yeah. I think Real Muto will really work well for you guys. Philly fans are going to love him. And oh, yeah. So... You know, I'm looking forward to see what happens. Yeah, I think that with the Phillies, like you said, this is part of a bigger plan. They're not done by any means. Oh, absolutely not. Even if they don't get one of the big two, which I think they will still. That's one of my – I'm feeling that they will. But it's hard to tell right now. Yeah. But I think that Kimball and Keiko are very much in play for the Phillies. Don't forget about those nope. two. They're still sitting out there. The Phillies have interest in both. It's been stated that they would like to get those two and one of the big guys we talked about. Yeah. So if they can pull that off, oh, man, you're talking about the winners of the offseason running away if Absolutely, they get that Absolutely, no question. Unless the Yankees somehow wake up and get one of the big two, then maybe you could say call us winners, but we got to see still. But the Marlins, the um, one thing we didn't talk about that's going to be very important for them is their draft picks. They're going to have to nail those draft picks. They're going to have very high picks for a while. That's going to be key to getting them back on track. I you've agree. seen teams do this before. Three teams have done this, actually, in recent memory, and they've all won World Series. Royals, mm -hmm. Astros, and the Cubs. They all did this to a certain extent. 
They, it was ugly baseball. It was bad baseball. You didn't think they'd come out of it, but eventually they did. Will the Marlins ever get back to that point? I don't know, but they have won two World Series in their franchise, so it is possible. And against us, what we might add. Yep, 2003 is a tough loss. Dontre Wells. Miguel D-train. Cabrera, yeah. damn. Yeah, that team was good. But um, they haven't won anything. They haven't even been to the playoffs since then, I don't think. That's 2003. Yeah, so that's 16 years. But the longest playoff drought is still the Seattle Mariners. That's getting close to 20 years. Oh, and that's going to be and, a whole process, and too. And it's going to be a long process, especially since all the stuff they traded away. Traded yeah, the away. Mariners are another team that are doing the full-fledged teardown almost. Yeah. So it will be interesting to see with that. So... We talked about the Astros. No, we didn't, but now we will. The Astros made a move. We were talking about how their rotation's very thin now behind Verlander and Cole. So they add some depth. Wade Miley gets a one-year deal, $4.5 million. Mm-hmm. He's a, one of the better starting pitchers to go off the market at this point. But he at, was 1.5 wins above replacement. He pitched just 80 innings. Had a 2.57 with 50 K, so it's a career season for Miley because his career ERA is almost two runs higher than that. Yeah. So I saw this joke on Twitter. Now that he's with the Astros, he's probably going to throw like high 90s and have like movement on his, like cut movement on his fastball. Yeah. Because that's what happens with the Astros. Their guys just magically throw faster. It's ridiculous. If Way Miley becomes a Must stub, be something in the water down there. It's, it's something like how they grip. I don't even know, man. It's crazy. Like the spin rate they talk about. I don't know. It's I don't get how they do it. Garrett Coles came in. Well, he always threw hard, but Burrow entered through faster. More in through faster. All these guys were throwing way faster than they used to before. They got there, so I hope that way Miley doesn't somehow become like a stub for them. Yeah, but we'll see what happens. If they still got Colin McHugh, will probably be their solid three. They'll throw him back in rotation. Way Miley will be the four. That five spot's very fringe. Maybe Peacock or someone else. That's really up in the air. It's a good move for the Astros. They had to get someone. Yeah. They don't bring Keiko back, which is still possible, I guess, but I don't think he's going back. I've, I've held that stance the whole offseason. Yeah. I'm still going to stand by it. Also, while we're on Astros, I don't think Marlon Gonzalez is going back either. Where he's going, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I'll still say White Sox, I guess, because I'm not buying the Machado White Sox stuff. Another report came out. Here we go again, brother. Is it Hector Gomez? <laughs> yes, again? he's starting more trouble. Now, he's the one saying that the White Sox are going to get Manny Machado. He thinks that he's going there. But I'll believe it when I see it. Me too. And... So that's, and Harper, okay, let's do Harper. Screw it. So, Harper, Yankees, speculation has been getting ramped up a little bit. You saw the batting practice with the shaved beard, which got everyone hyped in Yankees Nation. And you saw that Aaron Judge made a funny comment about how he would switch outfield spots for Bryce Harper. And then I'm not, and then Didi Gregorius, you see what happened with Didi? What? They asked him a question. He was dressed up nice. I think it was an award ceremony for Miguel and Duhar, actually. But um, what happened was two things came from this. D.D. was asked a question who's going to win the AL East, and he said that's a clown question. <laughs> <laughs> so does he know something we don't know? I can only hope, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> There's a lot uh, of little references and little hints being dropped that you, we might look, get it. Look, you don't, <laughs> Bryce Harper is known for that hair he has and the beard he has. And he shaved it, and he cut. If you didn't notice, Jules, he he trimmed his hair really short too. Oh, I didn't. I didn't really catch and that as much. The but. thing is, too, is there's only one reason for that, and people don't know this. The Yankees they run it like a military organization. You no facial hair. Oh yeah. No yeah. long hair. Yeah. They allow mustaches. That's it. Right. Yeah. So. I'm not one to say that, oh, God, we're definitely getting it. No, no, no. Like, I just I'm not think saying any of that I just stuff, think it's a little sketchy. Some of the dots are getting connected, though. But also, two very conflicting things here. Aaron Boone said he thinks the Yankees are done making moves, but I took almost no stock into that because, to me, Aaron Boone's a puppet, and he just does what yes. the organization tells him to. That's what they want as a manager. That's why they got to Girardi, so that's what they have now. So I don't take much stock into anything he says, really, because I don't really think... He's all that smart, honestly. I mean, he is in certain areas, like he knows his analytics and all that, but certain stuff, he's he leaves me scratching my head. I'll just put it that way. I'm sure a lot of Yankee fans agree with me about that, too. We'll see if he can step up this year. But he has to say that anyway. He can't be like, oh, yeah, we're going to go get him. No, because we haven't said that, so he can't publicly say anything different no. anyway. But Hal Steinbrenner gave us some hope today and said we might not be done. 
You know what? Coming from the boss saying that, that just tells that helps. That makes that, you feel good. That um tells me that something's going on. Yeah, maybe a little something behind the scenes. Because I've also seen some stuff that Harper might be willing to take a short term deal now. I don't yeah. know if you caught any of that. I saw Harper some, said he'll take a short term deal. I've seen something that said he may be open to a two to three year deal. Even let's give it to him. Yeah, honestly, right? What are we waiting for? Yeah. <laughs> but who knows if that's true? Again, it's all speculation. Uh, this yeah, stuff is yeah. hard to keep track of now. I don't want to give any false information. I have already, most likely. But it's because I was misled by other people. But I need to be responsible enough to try to decipher these rumors. But they're crazy. It's hard to. Yeah. So, now, with that, a very interesting thing was also floated that could possibly open the door for Bryce Harper. I, I messaged you about this, but you hear about Jacoby Ellsbury and the Giants checking in on him? Uh, yep, of course I have. It's been pretty crazy, man. So here is what happened with that. And it's not as crazy as it sounds, actually. So here's the situation. The Giants outfield is horrible. It might be one of the worst in baseball, honestly. Yeah. They traded Andrew McCutcheon and the guys here, Dagar... He popped 255 at bats, it looks like. Had like two homers, 17 RBIs, something like that. Then this guy, Shaw, had 54 at bats, 184. Um, this guy, Slater, had like one homer, 23 RBIs, like 250 at bats, hit like low 200s, I think. And this guy, Williamson, hit two thirds, had 213 at bats, with like four homers, 11 RBIs, or something. Yeah, their outfield is, like, non-existent. I don't even know these dudes. And then they got two guys in the minors that are on their roster. I haven't even played baseball before. Actually, one of them hasn't even played in the majors yet, and he's on their active roster for outfielders right now. Jesus. So I can understand why, as crazy as it sounds, they actually might need Elsberry or someone to it throw It makes a lot of sense for them, definitely. And... The other thing is that they have a contract they could match with Ellsbury's bad contract. That would be Johnny Cueto. Cueto is an interesting case. He had 1.2 wins above replacement before being injured last year. Only pitched 50 innings before having to go down with Tommy John. 38 Ks was 3-2. and two. So Cueto, I would like to see him in pinstripes, actually, if we can make this work out. The only, so the only issue with this... It could call it could fix two problems for us, but Ellsbury's contract, two years for forty two million, that's what we're left paying that bum. How much will we have to take on if we take on Cueto? Cueto, three for sixty three. That's why you add an extra year, which is very problematic, which is why this may not actually come to fruition unless the Giants wanna pick up some of that money, maybe bridge that gap a little bit. Maybe help give another player. I don't know how it would work. And also the other thing that we could do to maybe motivate them more and actually get rid of Ellsbury, which I've suggested for a while now. I'm not sure if the Yankees have even tried this approach yet. Attach prospects to Ellsbury. You need to make him more appealing. Yeah. You can't trade him by himself. He's yeah. horrible. You need to attach something to him. Like how the Knicks attach Christos Brzingis to Tim Hardaway and Courtney Lee. You weren't going to be able to trade them by themselves. You had to attach something to them, and they did. Then that's the same thing the Yankees are going to have to do with Ellsbury. Yeah. You're going to need to attach something to him to sweeten the pot. I agree. And I don't know why they haven't yet. they got to do it. It needs to get done. He can get traded. We've seen bad contracts moved. Robinson Cano's contract I thought was immovable, and the Mets took it on. You never know what goes on, man. That's why we, it's only two years. I mean, you can you can move it. It it can happen. You just have to sweeten the pot. Yep. And he needs to be off the Yankees. He has no place in yes, this team. Yes, and he's not going to contribute anything, even if he is somehow healthy. Apparently, he's still injured, too, which is crazy. He didn't even play last year. Like, well, the guy's a cardboard. He's like a piece of paper. He's a tin man. Yeah. <laughs> That's He's like that guy in Spongebob with the broken bones. It's like, I wake up, I break my legs. <laughs> That's what Jacoby Ellsbury is, basically. He's basically, <laughs> what he is, is he's basically like Mr. Glass in um, Unbreakable. Yeah. Samuel Jackson. That's what he is. Elijah. That's what he is. <laughs> yeah, he's the problem. Yeah. But if we can get the Giants to somehow get rid of them, that would be great. Yeah. Even if we had to take on Cueto, attach a prospect, just get, make it happen. Because that could open the necessary space for Mr. Harper. Because our outfield's too crowded, apparently, which is the most ridiculous yeah, okay. thing I've ever heard with all these 
Bums, we got running around with Gardner, Ellsbury. Frazier hasn't proven a thing yet. He might be good. He might not be. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not against him, but I'm not for him. Let's put it that way. I'm in the middle on Frazier. He needs yeah. to show me something next year. Yeah. I've enough with, I know he's been injured a lot, but it's time to show up, kid. We got you for a reason. Let's see why. We'll see what happens. And then there's one more note. Actually, two, I'll say. Nope. I'm really slack because it's actually four. <laughs> actually five wow <laughs> okay so speaking of the third base stuff with Machado there's also some, remember the, you saw this the rumors were being floated around that we actually want Nolan Arenado yeah but I have some bad news about that that's true well he's... Well, well first of all he just got that paper this year he set a record for arbitration 26 million dollars he's making this year so he did great obviously he wanted 30 million the Rockies offered 24, and he ends up getting 26. Hey, it's a good haul for him. Yeah, and this guy's a stud. 5.6 wins of a replacement, 38 homers, 110 RBIs, and a 297 average. This guy just hits. And he plays great defense, too. Him yeah. and Manny Machado are the best third baseman in baseball. <laughs> but the thing is, Arenado's two years older. And you don't know how much Coors Field impacts his hitting. Although Machado yeah. played at Camden Yards, so that's a hitter's part, too. And his road splits weren't that fantastic. The, the issue is the age and will the Yankees be willing to pay Arenado heavily when they weren't willing to pay Machado, who was two years younger? That's the other question. Also, the Rockies are very may be extending him. We might even get a chance to get him. Yeah, so. The Rockies might actually open up that bag and pay him, which I was surprised by. I thought he was going to walk. I didn't think they could really pay him. I mean, yeah. they paid Charlie Blackman. Although their payroll's, like, not that low. They're not, like, that low in the payroll scale. They're probably somewhere in, in the middle, maybe even, like, a little bit above average, I would guess. They have some decent players over there. They were a playoff team last year. But they're not, like, a high market, like, big spending team by any means. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. But that's why... I never put any eggs into the Arenado basket. I've been all about Machado. We were going to do something. I don't want to wait. There's no reason to wait. Just Unless it's, it's my Trout. I'll wait for my Trout. That's a whole other story, yeah. though. But Because the Phillies are a big threat for Trout if the Angels let him walk. Yeah. That would be that would be crazy when that happens. Although, Arenado is a great player. I'd like to have him, obviously. But I want Machado more than Arenado because you don't have to give up anything to get Machado. We would... Possibly, they were saying we would trade for Arenado, which makes no sense at all. Unless uh -huh. you give him Andujar, but still, why are you going to give him assets and you can just sign someone that's two years younger? I don't know, man. That makes no sense yeah. to me. Although the infield's very crowded now, so I'm not even sure if Machado is a real possibility Never mind anymore. the outfield being crowded. No, it's the, the infield, infield, I said it's crowded No, now. that's what I'm saying, yeah. So, that's that. Minor league deals from veteran outfielders. Hunter Pence, Rangers. He hit just... Four homers and 24 RBIs. Had around 340 at-bats, only 226 average. He not, he's on the downside of his career, obviously. The Rangers are trying to strike magic here, take a shot in the dark. So we'll see if that works out for them. I'm not sure, but hey, why not? And then the Marlins took Curtis Granderson, as you mentioned before. 13 homers, just a 242 average, 38 RBIs, 0 0.9 wins above replacement. And 343 at bats. Again, his better days are behind him. He can mm -hmm. play in certain situations, but he's not an everyday player anymore. No, obviously. No, absolutely not. And then they do. What's this guy's name? I was making jokes about it before the show, and now, of course, <laughs> I can't. All right, Boxberger, forget his last name. I forget his first name. The Royals sign him to a one year deal, and I'm not. Really sure. Well, I guess I'm sure why. Because he's a reliever. You need depth. Brad Boxberger. There we go. This guy's irrelevant, though. He actually hurts your team when you put him out there. <laughs> <laughs> His war was negative 0 0.7. So you would have been better off not pitching him. Opposed to pitching him last year. <laughs> he was 3-7. and seven. His ERA was a 4-4. Four -four. He said nothing to get tripped, but only hurt the cause. Oh, God. <laughs> so now he's a royal. They're going to hope to turn him around. And that team's another laughing stock rebuilding mess. Like, baseball has way too much of that going on right now. That's the problem with the free agency. We've, we've hit on this a million times, but let's just play a little game for a second. I'm just going to try to have some fun with this, try to spice it up. So let's go through all the teams. 
and tell me all the teams that are bottom dwellers, sellers, like not doing anything, trying to completely blow it up and don't spend money. AL East, Baltimore Orioles, there's one. You could yeah. argue the Toronto Blue Jays, too. And there's sellers. Tampa Garbage. Bay, I'll say, Garbage. not in that mode because they actually spend money and they're yeah. actually trying to make themselves better. They're just limited well, because of the low resources. Yep, and they have to. They're I'm kind of talking about teams that are choosing to do this. So I'll say Toronto and Baltimore. There's two right there. Mm-hmm. Royals, Tigers, White Sox. Well, the White Sox are kind of not trying anymore, but still in that area. So I'll take White Sox out because they're actually trying to get players. Will they? I don't know, but they're trying. So there's four teams right there. In the AL West, Texas Rangers. They're not doing anything. That's a complete embarrassment. I don't know what's going on there. Anaheim Angels are on the fringe. I mean, they're They're like halfway in and halfway out. They're kind of weird, so I won't fully put them on there. Oakland is trying. They're just limited because of their restraints. Houston's obvious. Oh, Seattle. So that's six right there. You have two in, the Amer- two in each division in the American League. So you have six of the 15 teams that are basically sitting on their hands not even trying. Let's go to the National League. Marlins, seven. Yeah. In the Central, you can argue the Pirates are doing that, kind of. They're not really doing much. That's eight. The Reds are actively trying to get better, so I won't put them in that list. The Brewers are a good team still. They're not on that. Cubs and Cardinals aren't on that. But you go to the West. The Padres, they're very fringy. Like, they're kind of trying, but are they really? I don't know. They did sign Eric Thompson to a big deal last year. They're on, they're on the fence for me. Giants are a mess financially, so they can't do much. But they actually met with Bryce Harper. We didn't even get to that. And apparently, I don't know how legitimate this is. Do you even believe this? They said the Giants offered Harper six years and $180 million. Do you think that's even true? No, I yeah. don't think so at all. It's hard to, yeah, I can't, I don't even know, honestly. So, we go out west. The Padres are kind of tanking, not tanking. I'm calling the middle store. Diamondbacks, that's another one that's at. Mm-hmm. Although they did pay a lot for Grinky, but they traded go- their best player, and they're not they're not spending anything. So I'm going to put them in there. Diamondbacks, Padres are very fringy. Dodgers not, are obviously doing what they do. Um, Cubs are locked up because they've spent too much money on too many bad contracts. Same yeah. thing with the Red Sox. They have too much payroll. They can't take anyone else on. And then the rest of that division, what is it? Giants, like we said, they're locked up, kind of. Padres on the fringe, Dodgers. I'm missing one team, Rockies. So you have almost 10 teams that are basically sitting on their hands. Yeah. And then you have the ones that are tied up because they've spent too poorly. So you have like 12 teams, basically, that these guys have no chance of signing with. And then the other ones that we talk about, other ones have market restraints. So it really gets whittled down to like, Two of the four teams that are probably serious for both players, yeah. which is the issue, I guess, because there's not that much bidding, and the teams feel like they're bidding against themselves almost, which is why they're not giving the guys what they want, yeah. and which is why we're in February and they're still sitting here. Right. So I'm almost done. I feel like there shouldn't be much more. There's two things, and then we're actually done. So we talked about Wade Miley before, and the starting pitching market starting to thin out. The one guy I would be looking for to sign relatively soon is Gio Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Yep. He, we've been interested, apparently. Mets have been linked, Brewers and Padres. We'll see what happens with him. He's probably the next starter to go, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I don't know when Dallas Keuchel's going to go or what he's waiting for. I can't. I haven't heard nothing about that, so I know nothing, literally. Yeah. And um, that's the starting pitching watch. For Now, one thing, I'm not sure if I touched on this before on our other video, but I wanted to get this in just in case. The Royals extended with Merrifield. Did I talk about this? No. Last week? Okay, no. I think I meant to, but didn't. So, this was actually a very low-key, under-the-radar move that took place. They extended four years, $16.25 million, which is an absolute bargain for this dude. Yeah. Let me tell you what he put up last year. 304 average, 12 homers, 60 RBIs, and 45 stolen bases, 5.5 wins above replacement. He's the second base, and he probably he could also play the outfields if you need him. Mm-hmm. He's only around 30, 30, I think he's 31 actually. And the Royals got this guy for not they extended him for nothing. But he's very versatile, I say. I would have liked to have him. I think he's better than DJ LeMayhew, honestly. And we paid LeMayhew $12 million. <laughs> But that's a whole other discussion. Although LeMay, he was a better defender probably, but still. Yeah. Wayne Mary feels way better on offense. Yeah. So, 
forget that comparison for a minute, but this could have also happened so the Royals can trade him down the line because that contract's very affordable. That's yes. a great trade asset. If oh, you're yeah. trying to flip him, you can get a big package for Whit Merrifield. If, especially at the deadline if someone's looking for him. Yeah. Which I'm sure, I don't see why someone wouldn't be. He can do almost everything on the field. Yeah. He's well, a great player. I like him a lot, honestly. He is a very decent player. So, for today, I think that's all we have time for, but we need to talk some stuff out here. So, we are going to be in Florida for a little bit, so I'm not exactly sure when the next baseball show is going to happen. If we're there at the same time something happens, we're going to have to work some stuff out. You may see a solo show of me talking to Bobby on the phone or, or vice versa. So... We're going to have to keep everyone posted on that. Yes. We're going to try to get you guys the updates as best we can. It's going to be a little hectic for us these next few weeks. So we're... We're going to be traveling a lot. Yeah, so we're going to have to see what happens. But if Bryce Harper or Manny Machado sign, we will have some sort of show for it. Yeah, we will We will be up to date on it. You guys will uh, definitely be informed by us, definitely. Wherever we are, we can... Yeah, we'll figure it out somehow. Whether I... Well, I'm going to be in Tampa on leaving on Sunday till Saturday, and Julian will be coming down, I believe, what, Thursday to Thursday, Julian? Yeah, doing? so we're going to be out of commission for a little bit, but one of us will be manning the station for most of the time, because we're only down there together for like two days, so hopefully it just doesn't happen in those two days. We'll watch it well somehow. Of course. <laughs> so that they're both going to sign those two days. And they'll days. probably sign. Imagine. <laughs> what's going to happen, Jules, is it's going to happen when you turn your phone off on the plane. That's what's going to happen. Imagine I touched down like, oh, God. And you're gonna, your phone's just going to blow up, bro. <laughs> that would be crazy because I don't got TVs on my plane. I, I'm, uh, I'm on a crappy airline uh -huh. because I got it last minute. So, But at least I'm getting out of this call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah so for today I think that's all we have time for I don't know what our next show is going to be I kind of just explain that murky situation but I'm Julian Gilardi I'm Bobby Thompson and we'll see you next time whenever that is